Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to section two, chapter 20 on balancing redox equations. Now, to balance redox equations, we have to use the half reaction method. What this means is we treat oxidation and reduction as two separate processes in order to balance them. So we balance both half reactions separately and then combine them to get the overall reaction. This is similar to what we did back in chapter five with thermochemistry when we took different enthalpies of reactions and then added up these different reactions to find the overall enthalpy of that reaction, kind of using, using Hess's law. So <clears throat> their half reaction method is going to be outlined for us today using a few different steps. We're going to go here in purple along the way. Now, one thing to consider is that this is balancing a reaction in acidic solution. This is very specific because later we will learn how to balance a reaction that's happening in basic solution, which has a slightly different process. So the first thing to do in your half-reaction method is to assign oxidation numbers to determine what is oxidized and what is reduced. Now, <clears throat> a little hint here, oxygen appears many times throughout this equation, our example here. Um, so we're going to use oxygen to figure out the oxidation states of the atoms attached to oxygen, but we're not really concerned ourselves about how oxygen is changing itself. So our first step is we have permanganate reacting with oxalate. Um, producing manganese 2 plus and carbon dioxide gas. So let's look here at oxygen. Oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2. I have 4 oxygen, so that's minus 8. That's for oxygen. Now I have to think, well, manganese is with this. So what, does, what charge does manganese have, or what oxidation state does manganese have? Uh, I can add with negative 8 to give me the overall charge of this ion, which is negative 1. And that's going to be a positive 7. So positive 7 plus the negative 8 gives you the overall charge of this ion, negative 1. So manganese has an oxidation state of plus 7. Now we have C2O4, 2 minus here. Oxygen, again, minus 2 times 4 gives you minus 8. So again, what plus minus 8 is going to give you a minus 2 charge or 2 minus charge there? And it's going to be positive 6. But since we have two carbons here, it's positive three because each carbon attributes to the six there. So each carbon is plus three. I have two of them, making plus six. There we go. But I'm just looking at carbon now. Just carbon. It's really plus six to get that math to be right, but I'm only talking about carbon's oxidation state, oxidation number. Now let's look at how things change in our products. So manganese 2 plus, its charge is its oxidation state, so it's just plus 2. Carbon dioxide, it's an electrically neutral atom, or sorry, molecule, so it doesn't have an, any charge here. It's a charge of 0. So oxygen is minus 2. Minus 2 times 2 gives you minus 4. So what plus minus 4 gives you 0? It's going to be a positive 4. So let's look at how things change. Manganese goes from plus 7 to plus 2. Carbon goes from plus 3 to plus 4. Now, our second step for this half reaction method is to write our oxidation and reduction half reactions separately. So I see that C2O4 2 minus goes to CO2. This represents oxidation. Oxidation is losing electrons, oil, right? So, from here to go from plus 3 to plus 4, you had to lose something negative to increase in your positive. And here, going from permanganate to manganese 2 plus, this has to be reduction by default if that's oxidation, but reduction, reduction is losing electrons. And we went from plus 7 to plus 2. If, if you're going from plus 7 and you'd be going less positive, that means you're becoming more negative. So you've gained electrons with reduction. Reduction is gaining electrons. Now, <clears throat> we can take these half reactions and carry on to actually balancing them now. So step three here outlines four different steps in balancing a redox reaction. So first, A, balance all elements other than hydrogen and oxygen. B, balance oxygens by adding H2O. C, balance hydrogens by adding H+, and D, balance charge by adding electrons. Now, we're going to first handle just the oxidation half reaction. 
So we have C2O4 2 minus and CO2. So for letter A, balance all, excuse me, balance all elements other than H and O. Well, that means carbon. So here we balance our carbon by putting a coefficient of 2 there. Our carbons are balanced. And putting that 2 there also balances our oxygens. Since our oxygens are now balanced, we do not have to go to letter B, which is balance oxygens by adding H2O. We don't have to add H2O in this case because that coefficient balanced our oxygens. Since we don't have to add waters, that means we don't have any hydrogens present. So letter C also is not, apl not applicable here. So we can't add H pluses because we don't have any hydrogens to balance. So we go to the next step, final step, balance charge by adding electrons. Well, here, my charge on my reactant side is 2 minus, so negative 2. You can think of it that way. Here, I have CO2 gas, electrically neutral. My charge over here is 0. So how do I balance 0 and negative 2? Well, I can only add electrons here. So I have to add two electrons here in order to balance out the negative two charges over there. That's how you do that. Now let's look at our reduction half. <clears throat> so our reduction half, we have permanganate going to manganese 2 plus. Your manganese atoms are already balanced. So you don't have to worry about that. Now we go to our second step. Balance oxygens by adding water. Well, I have four oxygens here, no oxygens over here, so I must need four water molecules, because with four water molecules you get four oxygens, which balance the four oxygens over there. Now, since I've added some hydrogens here, eight of them to be exact, when I go to letter C, when I balance my hydrogens by adding H+, I have to account for that now. So down here, I have eight hydrogens on my product side, none on my reactant side, so I add eight H+, ions. Hydrogen is balanced now. And finally, balance the charge by adding electrons. Now you have to count up total charge on each side to get this right. So here, I have negative 1 plus 8 positive charges. 8 positive charges plus a negative 1 gives you 7 positive charges, right? So that's 7 plus. On this side, I have 2 plus, and then H2O is electrically neutral. So on this side, I have 2 plus. So remember, I can only add negative electrons, <clears throat> negative electrons, excuse me. So, in order to get the 2 plus and the 7 plus to be equal, I have to add 5 electrons. It's 5 negative things plus 7 positive things gives me positive 2. And it matches that side there. Now, finally, to continue this, we have to start to work to put these two things together. So, step four, we're going to multiply the half reactions by integers to get our electrons to be the same on either side so that they can cancel out. Five, we add half reactions together, subtracting the things that appear on both sides of the reaction. And six, check if the equation is balanced according to mass and charge. So let's start to do that. So for step four here, we have... <clears throat> our two half reactions as we just had in the, the last board. But now we're going to do, we'll get our electrons to match each other. We have to find a common multiple to do that. The common multiple between 5 and 2 is 10. So to get them both to 10, we have to multiply them by different numbers. So multiply this entire equation by 5. I mean, for this, we multiply the entire equation by 2. So this 5 is distributed into each quantity that's there, each substance that's there. When we do that, we get our result here in step 5. We get 5 oxalates going to 10 carbon dioxides and 10 electrons for our top reaction here, our oxidation step. And for our reduction step, we had to multiply everything times 2. So 5 times 2 gives us 10. And then 16 H pluses, 2 permanganates, 2 manganese 2 plus, and 8 water molecules. Once we have those electrons balanced, we go to step 5. We add our half reactions together. And what this does, if we add these two together, things that appear on our product side and my reactant side, they cancel. 
they cancel. In this case, it's only my electrons. Sometimes you'll have water molecules on the right side, your product side, and on your reactant side. Then they will cancel too, depending on how many you have. But in this case, only your electrons and your, just your electrons cancel. So now I add up all my <clears throat> substances on my reactant side, add up all the things on my product side. We've done this before with um, thermodynamic equations and calculating enthalpies of reactions, so this shouldn't be that new to you. So all of my reactants add up, and I get 5 oxalates plus 16 H pluses plus 2 permanganates, and those are all of my reactants left over. And then that produces 10 carbon dioxides plus 2 manganese 2 plus atoms plus my 8 water molecules. And this is your final answer down here, gentlemen. Now, 6. You check to see if everything is balanced according to mass, and it is. Count up your atoms. And then for charge, we have 2 plus, 16 1 pluses, and a 1 minus. That's going to give you what? 13 positives. And here we have 2 plus times 2. Wait, that doesn't give you 13 positives. Sorry. I forgot that 5 there. So that 5 there will balance out with the 16 and 2. Yes. All right. So we're, we are balancing charge as well. Thought I made a mistake. I did not. All right, gentlemen. So this is how you balance a redox reaction. Um, take notes on this. Come prepared to talk about this in class. Adios.